still moves. So today's operations are radiator, because we didn't have one. That's the operation. Let's take this front panel off. Let's see the space, it should be plenty. Radiator is in, just attaching the plugs there for the fan. Um, we use the slimline fan just for more space. Uh, also, the conversion loom itself, when you get it, it says that you need to add a green wire, which is this green wire here. It tells you that needs to go to the fan switch. So, because we're using a adjustable thermostat, well, it's not even a th it is a thermostat, yeah, because yeah, using a spinny round thermostat housing, which is, I think you can maybe just make it out there, that silver thing there. The top right hand side of that there is the fan switch. So we've had to run a wire to that fan switch. And then also check that the fan wiring was the right way around, which it wasn't, because I put it backwards at first, because I'm a genius. So that should now all work. And um, I'll put the ignition back on. Ready? So, keep this on. Hopefully you can hear the fan. Yeah. How's it on? Oh, yeah. Just leave it on, mate. Right. Ignition back on. Making sure it's all right, mate. Cool. Beautiful, beautiful. So, we've put this bar at the bottom there, which you've seen the welding of in the previous section of this video, and also made little brackets there for the radiator mounting to. And um, this was done in the last video, but Johnny's put time, uh, what they're called, rivnuts, rivnuts in into there. there, bolted that in there. So that now can be complete, that's removable, dead easy to remove. It means the engine can come out dead easy as well. Fans all wired in, all that's done. The only problem we've got now is that the coolant pipes don't quite fit because. It's hard to describe without showing a, a quick demonstration, but this is 32 mil, that's 28 mil. You can't put the 28 mil over the 32 mil, it just doesn't work. Um, so I've got some adapters coming, which will sort that. Uh, otherwise, that's pretty much the coolant done. So um, the two reducing things will hopefully allow a piece of this pipe and a piece of that pipe to make together in some sort of docking ritual. Um, which will allow water to flow through and we need to do the same underneath as well. I haven't really looked at the underneath pipes but I'm sure the shape of all these here should have something that do it. It'll probably go together all right with a bit of luck. <coughs> which is a bit of a shame because I could have put water in and drove it around for a while but there you go. Um, that's it, it's pretty, it's come on pretty good. 
I could actually put the crash bar back on and I could probably put the bumper on properly. Well, no, maybe just put the crash bar on and leave the bumper hanging just in case, because you never know. Um, and then inside, there's all the wiring to tidy up. It's all wired up properly. It just wants rooted and these two tucked up behind the dash somewhere in there, like where the standard jazz one is. Sent the console put back in. Um, what's left? Just water and exhaust. Uh, exhaust Bodge and exhaust. But yeah, oh yeah, this random bloody overfill tank, which I can't work out where that's supposed to go at all, ever. If there was a bracket on it, there wasn't a bracket. I don't know where that was supposed to attach to. Was, either I've cut something off, drilled something out, removed something, and I don't know where that goes. So I'm just going to, um, I'm going to use a universal bracket to hold that in place, I think. Best way, innit? Um, well, you could use a cable tie, but... That's what I mean, universal bracket. I know you meant <laughs> That's pretty much it, really. So it's just two water pipes. Well, exhaust in theory and a little bit of tidying up which obviously we can do all the tidying up when it's it's working properly but um yeah so far it runs with no ecu light which is a bit strange i was expecting to have an ecu light it's a little bit hesitant first throttle maybe that's because there's no exhaust on it i don't know or that well, i'm not really sure but um maybe needs a throttle position set we'll have a look at that at some point but it does start and it does drive because i drove it in at the start of the video it means i can drive it back out again yeah i don't really know where that was supposed to go it makes no sense does it and the pictures, it's inside the bay somewhere, like in here. Yeah. But, yeah, like kind of there, but I, I don't see how it attached. I think I'll have a Google. Length of the pipe wires, it's got to be somewhere in that yeah, location, it does. isn't it? It's as if it was supposed to attach to the radiator somehow, but there's nothing on the radiator yeah, it could on, possibly on that, attach to. On that. Maybe onto the fan cow. Oh, maybe, aye, yeah, good point. Yeah, let's have a look. One over here. And uh, it's a bigger fan. It's that one. Yeah, aye, there you go. It'll have tucked into that ah, hot and it sits in there. Yeah. yeah, so that's what it was. It's that way up. Yeah, so the connected bolts on there and goes in there. That's what it was. So we haven't got that, so we need to. We'll have to fabric cobble something for yeah. that. Yeah. Ah, interesting. So that's how it fits. I did always wonder that when I took it off. I could never work it out. It makes sense now. Anyway, death to that fan. Well, not death, but just don't need it. it doesn't fit. Right, so not that you can see this because, well, you actually can. It's quite light. That there is the jazz radiator end that's 28 mil internal diameter and that's the civic one that's 32 mil internal diameter that's fine now you can put a bit of civic hose we can get a little tiny little bit of a reducer in there like a plastic one and attach that onto there using a bit of jazz hose it kind of works all right we can make that work and um, i've got the reducers coming that shouldn't be too bad the problem is the other hose which is going to be really hard to show you which is the one underneath because the amount of space is very limited so i'll uh, flip the camera up the floor and up the way um, i don't even know if you can see this because i can't see the screen actually um, can you see from down there no you can't really it's difficult uh, right so I'll just take a guess that you can see um, so if you can see that, I don't know if you can, but basically the adapter that we've got for the thermostat, although it does swivel around, it doesn't really help much particularly because the bottom radiator one, again, is 28 mil, and the top thermostat one is 32 mil. But it's also the angle that comes off the radiator is not straight, which is annoying, um, and the fact that the pipe's going to have to go out and then come back on itself and go back in at a 45 degree angle also slightly annoying. But um, Hopefully these little plastic reducer parts have got that coming. We'll sort that maybe, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, otherwise, radiator's all bolted in properly, all good and strong. Um, made a bracket to mount the overflow canister in as well, so that's actually attached now. Um, it does kind of want push back a little bit, but we'll sort that at a later date. But all that's in. That pipe's done there. Got a fancy green one just to look smart because the car's green, yay. So yeah, got a whole heap of pipes here, which are various FN2. EP3, CRV and Jazz and none of them actually work, none of them go directly on so if anybody knows what does fit that would be fantastic if you could tell us but probably by the time you do tell us we've sorted a solution out involving some plastic reducers but you never know. Um, but yeah so far not bad, a um, bit annoying that didn't really work so it would have been nice to put the coolant and the water in it and then run it up to temperature for a while and take it for a little drive a bit further than they have but next time. You never know. Cool. Um, looks smart though, doesn't it?